Dolphins, what's happening? The draft is over, baby. The draft is over. And Dolphins, hey, we, we got some nice picks. We got a couple little question marks and whatever. And we're going to go through those today. We're going to go through those today. Now, if uh, you check in with me, you know, you might have checked. Uh, the, the recap of the first round. So I'm going to recap rounds two through seven and give an overall grade for day two, day three, as well as an overall grade for the draft and what we might be seeing as Dolphins. Now, oh, I didn't even introduce myself. It's your homie Chris Class. Welcome back to Chilling with Class. It's another Miami Dolphins edition. Miami has the Dolphins, the greatest football team. We take the ball from goal to goal like no one's ever seen. We in the air, we on the ground, always in control. <laughs> well, you talking Dolphins? We talking Super Bowl. Let's go. Congratulations to Chris Greer. Congratulations to Coach Brian Flores. Congratulations. To all of our new Miami Dolphins. Yeah. So, we've already covered the first round. We know we got two at five. Austin Jackson, 18. Noah I. That's what we're going to call you now because I don't want to mess your last name up, bro. We got him with the 26th, no, 30th pick, excuse me, because remember we traded back, got that extra pick and whatnot, and was able to trade up in the fourth round. So, good move there, Chris Griff. You know, all right, so let's get into the second round. Second round, our first pick of the second round, it was the seventh overall pick of the second round, number 39 overall, Robert Hunt. Robert Hunt, he has the ability to play right guard or right tackle. Uh, so right now going into camp, it's looking like him and Jesse Davis going to be battling out for that right tackle spot. And whoever loses out is going to end up battling out for the right guard spot. With Michael Dieter, Shaq Calhoun, Danny Isadora, and another player who was drafted for that guard spot in this draft. We'll get to that later. But right now, we're just going to focus on Hunt. Hunt, hey, I just want to say I really like the pick. I like the pick. He's somebody I looked at. Big, big bodied old lineman. Like I said earlier, he has the versatility to play guard or tackle. And that's something that we cherish down here in in, in the Miami Dolphins organization is that we need people who are versatile. Versatile. All right, now, the only question I got about this pick is that maybe it was a little bit early. There was a lot of, you know, we do have a lot of holes, or we did have a lot of holes, and I was hoping that maybe we got, you know, somebody uh, like a J.K. Dobbins or a Jonathan Taylor of an offensive playmaker that can help grow with Tua. But they opted to protect Tua, which I don't mind either. Because, hey, we, you know, that's been the main thing with Tua is the injury concerns. So, while I wish they might have got J.K. Dobbins, Jonathan Taylor, maybe even Antoine Winfield Jr. at that spot, I'm all right with Robert Hunt. I'm all right with that. We got to protect our quarterback. We ain't had an old line in a very long time. Now, later on in that second round of day two, pick 56. And this is what ate me up because pick 55, the Ravens got J.K. Dobbins right before that. I was crossing my fingers like, oh, J.K. Dobbins still going to fall to us at 56. But, no, it ain't happened. We ended up getting Raekwon Davis out of Alabama. Big D lineman by 6'6", 6'7", 300 plus. And I mentioned him before in another video. He's somebody who I had on my radar and was hoping would come to the Dolphins. I am so glad he's here. So we got Raekwon Davis on the line and Raekwon McMillan in the linebacker court. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shout out to the Wu-Tang and all my Wu-Tang fans. You know what I'm saying? And everybody that's naming their kids Raekwon. <laughs> but Raekwon Davis, he's an Alabama coach player. So you know he's coached pro-like, pro-style. 
by Nick Saban, no nonsense. He's going to come in and do his job. He's going to be a good space eater. He's a great run defender. And hopefully we build him up to, you know, getting some sacks too. Now, Raekwon Davis, I think he's going to have the ability to bo play both inside and on the end with that line too, whether we're doing three-man fronts or four-man fronts. Now, another thing uh, with the Raekwon Davis thing, um, just like with Robert Hunt, Maybe did we get him a little too high? So we have taken advantage of, you know, how deep and good this wide receiver class is and give somebody two to grow with. Yeah, we do have problems in our trenches. So I'm glad that they addressed that. But, yeah, you know, with all the holes that we got, do we go best available and get, get, get some studs and playmakers? Because um, with some of the people left on the board, like I said, with Hunt, Taylor, Dobbins, Winfield Jr., Grant Delpit was, was still available. And we had a need to replace Minka and also a need at running back. Now, with Raekwon Davis, a couple players that were still left on the board, um, we had Jeremy Chin, they were saying small school, small school safety, great measurables, had a great combine, had a combine similar to Isaiah Simmons, and also height, weight, speed similar to Isaiah Simmons. Then, Christian Fulton and Jalen Johnson were quarterbacks still on the board. So it makes you wonder, damn, did we go get Noah I too early in the in the first round? And probably could have got Jalen Johnson and Christian Fulton. Who knows? Who knows? But hey man, we're gonna trust the front office. We're gonna trust the front office that you know y'all did y'all due, due diligence and, and made the right selections. Now, round three. Round three, they selected Brandon Jones, safety out of Texas. Now, this was a real big surprise. I didn't have Brandon Jones. I didn't think he was going nowhere near this high in the third round. I, I just didn't see it at all. There must have been a lot of things that they liked about him. I mean, when I saw the tape, yeah, there was some good things, but he did, uh, if I'm not mistaken, end the season on injury and wasn't even at the combine. I think they probably could have got him a little, a, a lot later maybe, you know. But, hey, if that's the guy that they like, cool. Because sometimes, you know, you want the guy who's going to fit right with the system. You want somebody who's going to be a good locker room guy as well. But, again, I felt it was too high. And in that third round, when you look through that third round, man, there was a lot of talent getting drafted in that third round. Uh, guys like Josh Jones – who was projected to probably go first, second round as a tackle. I'm thinking if maybe we don't get Robert Hunt so early in the second round, we can get Josh Jones in the third to play the right tackle. Davon Hamilton also went shortly after Brandon Jones. Big, big D lineman, 320 pounds, somebody we could throw in there for the nose tackle. I'm going to be watching him to see how he performs to see if, man, he was somebody that, we could have selected over Brandon Jones. Zach Bond, who I also mentioned in another video of linebackers they were looking at and probably should be looking at. He's a guy who can play all over the field. He's out of Wisconsin, like Vince Beagle, like Andrew Van Ginkle. You know, they would have messed together and kept the linebacker core, core strong. Uh, Kashawn Vaughn, the running back out of Vanderbilt. Not an overly hyped guy, but if we didn't get one of those running backs earlier, why couldn't we have gotten a Kashawn Vaughn to pair up with Jordan Howard? Ran in the SEC, played at Vanderbilt, so his team wasn't the greatest SEC team, but he had to play that SEC caliber defenses on a week-to-week -week basis. Jabari Zanuga out of Florida was also available. That's an edge rusher. Uh, Lloyd Cushenberry, no good play center or guard or whatever. If we didn't go, you know, the Robert Hunt route or, like I said, we grabbed the guard later in the draft. I'm going to mention that later too. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, Gallimore. Gallimore was available. All kind of people was available. Jordan Elliott was available. Those are Gallimore and Jordan Elliott are D-tackles. There's somebody else to put on the line with Rayquan Davis because we do need line help. We had a 
terrible, terrible run defense last year. Our run defense was damn near just as bad as our run offense. So I do appreciate them trying to build the trenches. Now with that um day two draft, day two, I'm going to give the day two grade. Day two grade, I'm going to give a B minus. B minus because I like the players, but maybe we could have grabbed some other playmakers or other players higher. And I think that, you know, maybe down the road, this B minus can turn into a B plus or A minus. Now, day three, day three, round four through seven. Round four through seven in round four. We moved up actually in round four. And we got Solomon Kinley. Guard out of Georgia. This a real big boy. If you thought Robert Hunt was big, man, Solomon Kinley just as big, if not just a little bigger. And he's also somebody who's going to be in the mix for right guard. So now it's like, damn. Now it looks like we got a log jam at the guards. So it looks like one of our guards is going to end up being practice squad, released, or maybe traded for a future later round pick. Because uh, we've got Eric Flowers who's going to be playing left guard. Uh, we've got uh, Danny and Isadora, Michael Dieter, who played left guard last season, but has the versatility to play center and guard. Then we've uh, also got Kick Ted Karras, who came over from New England. He's probably going to play center if Dieter don't beat him out for center. Then we drafted Hunt, Shaq Calhoun, we've got Danny Isadora, we've got. And now Solomon Kinley, and then we know Jesse Davis can play right tackle or right guard. So we've got like eight, nine players just for the interior. It might be good depth, but if we need that many players, that might be a bad thing. You know, the fact that we can't find somebody who can be there. Hopefully we find that this year and don't have to carry so many players, but injuries happen, so you gotta carry some extra people. And if they all quality, then that's even better. All right, now after that fourth round, we traded our fifth round pick, one of our fifth round picks for Matt Breida. Matt Breida running back out of um, San Francisco. He was, a, uh, I think he was an undrafted guy. He had some good numbers. Uh, Matt Breida actually was a member of my fantasy football team for, for, for quite a number of weeks. <laughs> Appreciate you, Matt. Now that you're on the Dolphins, that's going to be even better. Hopefully, Matt Breeder can fight off his injury bug. He is a player who's often nicked up and misses some time. So I guess uh, that backfield of him and Jordan Howard would, would be cool. I was looking for us to maybe even get another back. So that way we have a three-man rotation. I'm not sure who's going to be the third man in this rotation with Balazs, Patrick Laird, and Miles Gaskin as we didn't see too much production from them last season. I think out of the three, Laird might have been the best. He, Even though he didn't have the greatest run average, he ran tough, and he had some nice catches out the backfield. Now, after the trade to San Fran for Breida, we also selected Jason Strobridge. Uh, he'll probably be DN in, in the three-man fronts. Uh, Jason Strobridge is out of North Carolina. He's got that Butch Davis coaching. So I think he's going to fare well. A lot of us may not have heard of him. North Carolina, oh, man, that's a basketball school. But as of late, they've been putting out some decent players in the NFL. Jason Strobridge. Welcome to Miami. I, I think uh, with the coaching here and with the coaching that you received in North Carolina, I think you could be a good piece. I mean, remember, Dolphins, fans, what we got a couple years ago with Charles Charles Harris, Jason Strobridge going to take care of that. Then, my favorite pick of this fifth round, how did Curtis Weaver drop all the way to the fifth round? Now, this is somebody who was an edge rusher, was projected to go anywhere from late first to mid second. And somehow he dropped all the way to the fifth round. I don't know what people saw, didn't see that made him drop to the fifth round, but thank you. 
Thank you, because y'all put a chip on his shoulder. Y'all brought him down here where we've got good coaches who going to turn him loose. Curtis Weaver in the fifth round? Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So we got a nice edge rusher. As I said, yeah, Charles Harris might be out of there with, with, with Jason Strobridge. Now, Curtis Weaver come up in there. It's going to be a lot of competition for who's going to be coming in on second and third down. Woo! I'm really liking that Curtis Weaver pick. For real, for real. Now, sixth round. Now, this is where I, like, threw my hands in the air, went to cussing and all that. Blake Ferguson, long snapper out of LSU. What? You drafted a long snapper? Really? You could, we couldn't get that as an undrafted free agent, for real? With all the talent that was left on the board in the sixth round, a damn long snapper? Was Tabor Pepper our long snapper last year that bad? Because remember, we released John Denny, a long tenure long snapper for Tabor Pepper. Now we just going to cut Tabor Pepper and draft a long snapper in the sixth round? For real? Cool. He came from LSU. Winning program. They just won a championship. I talked with a couple of my, you know, my, my, my LSU diehard fans. They say, hey, man, Blake, Blake a good one. Blake a good one. He don't mess up. You know, I read some reports. Yeah, he's a great long snapper, good locker room guy, good kid. I think he was a team captain as well. And his brother uh, is a long snapper for the Bills. So cool. If, if Blake Ferguson ends up being our long snapper for 10 to 15 years, then I guess this is a good pick. But couldn't get him as an undrafted free agent with all the talent that was still sitting there, like Donovan Peoples-Jones, who just got drafted a couple picks later, Khalil Davis, the lead lineman, one of the twins out of Nebraska, James Prochet, the wide receiver from, from SMU, uh, uh, Prince uh, Prince Tiga, who they was running commercials for the whole time, the, 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 the offensive lineman from Auburn, he had slipped all the way to six and was a projected First to second uh, uh, was a projected second, third rounder. Why couldn't we pick up that value if we just stopped piling old linemen to protect two of them? But you probably weren't going to take them because we took Robert Hunt early. And I do like the Robert Hunt pick, but damn. Maybe we could have still picked Prince Teague up and, and whatever you know lineman is left over, we could trade for late round picks next season or something, or just let him go and save money. Then you had K.J. Hill, the wide receiver from Ohio State on the board, too. You know, you had D.P.J. and K.J. Hill still on the board. And then another running back that was on the board was Eno Benjamin out of Arizona State. Eno Benjamin kind of, you know, in the size mold of Breida a little bit, about 190, 195. Breida's often injured. You could have Use that sixth pick on, on Benjamin. I don't know. I don't know. I like it and don't like it. I like it because of who Blake Ferguson is, what I read up on about him, and the fact that, all right, it's a position that can be solidified for the next 10 years and they ain't got to worry about it. And we ain't got to worry about no high snaps on special teams. Messing the game up. Cool. So I'm going to be all right with that one. And last pick, Malcolm Perry out of Navy. For real? For real? Once again, a whole lot of talent still on the board. We grab Malcolm Perry from Navy. Malcolm Perry not saying that you're not talented or that you can't play or nothing like that. But... I don't know how many Navy players are really that great in the NFL and really couldn't, you know, I'm not sure. What is he going to play? Is he going to play running back or receiver? Because if I'm not, uh, was he the quarterback there, running back there? I don't know. What is he going to play? There was lots of talent there. Again, could you have got him as an undrafted free agent with other talent on the board, such as Steven Sullivan, who was drafted after Y'all really that sold on our tight end group? 
Fat Moss was still there. Moss, last name, Moss. Randy Moss, his daddy. Did you not see, if if y'all saw Blake Ferguson with the long snaps in, in the championship game, I'm sure you saw Thad Moss out there catching touchdowns and laying out blocks the whole game. Tyree Cleveland was also available. Speedster out of Florida, ran a 4-4. Nice receiver. Like, I don't see how we didn't take advantage of the receiving class this draft. Oh, we got Devontae Parker, Albert Wilson, and whatever. But if we can upgrade, let's upgrade. Was Albert Wilson fully healthy? Was Jakeem Grant fully healthy? Preston Williams was an undrafted free agent. And was he fully healthy? Are we going to continue to rely on diamonds in the rough? Let's go get them studs. They, they were studs available. Let's go get them. Now, Undrafted free agents. Undrafted free agents. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Ray, four, four through seven. Day three. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to give it a B minus. I want to give it a C, but I'm going to give it a B minus because I think Solomon Kinley might be a steal. Curtis Weaver is probably going to be a steal in that fifth round. Stroh Bridge, I think it's going to be a good rotational piece for us. And if and if Breida can stay healthy, it'll be a good one-two punch with Jordan Howard. So the only reason I got to knock off that is the, the, the long snapper pick and Malcolm Perry pick. I thought we could have got something better for those two. So I'm going to give it a, a B, B minus for, for day three. Now, undrafted free agents. I'm going to just go right away and give that an A- minus because we always do great with our undrafted guys. I like a couple of the undrafted guys I've seen. Um, wide receiver out of McKendry State. I think Matt Cole, his name. Fast guy. I liked what I saw. Uh, Benito Jones is somebody who I, was, who I was looking at before because he's that big body D lineman that we can use as a nose tackle. And then uh, at a Montana State small school, uh, Brian or Bryce uh, Sturk, I think his name. Yeah, Sturk or Stark. DN, he had a hell of a season at DN. Hell of a season. But what I'm reading is that they're going to play him at tight end. I don't know. I'm puzzled by that one. Maybe he has the athleticism to play tight end. Maybe he is somebody who's going to play both ways, like in the Landon Roberts. I like that. I like that, but I'm going to give it an A- minus because we didn't get Thad Moss. I'm really a Thad Moss fan. I'm a Thad Moss fan. And a couple of other uh, undrafted free agents out there that I felt we could have got. Um, I thought we should have brought in uh, probably a couple more receivers, probably a couple more running backs uh, for undrafted free agents. But, hey. Great job, Chris Greer. Great job, Brian especially with this being the first draft where they had to go virtual and everything like that. I'm not sure what kind of hindrance to put on y'all, man, but I'm really happy at what I see. I give the overall draft Gary a B plus. B plus just because of, you know, injury question marks, where certain players were, were selected. But other than that, man, this is a solid draft. Dog fans, we should be happy. It looks like we're going to the playoffs this year. With, with 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 this squad, with what we how we ended last season, and these new pieces that we got coming in, man, we got some good pieces. I'm really liking it, y'all fans. I'm loving it, baby. I'm loving it. It was looking real good, looking real good. So that was the draft for the Dolphins. Peace and love to my Dolph fam. Peace and love to Chris Greer, Brian Flores, and all the new draftees, all the new Dolphin people. This has been another Miami Dolphins edition of Chilling With Class. Peace and love.